As adults, we know we are supposed to see our eye doctor every year, but what is the right age to start making those appointments for children? In this episode of OcuTalk, optometrist Aaron Cutter will be explaining pediatric eye exam, how they work, and how early into childhood development they should start. Dr. Cutter? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hello everyone and welcome to OcuTalk. Today I'm going to be talking with Dr. Aaron Cutter from iHub Optometry here in Houston, Texas. Dr. Cutter, nice to see you. Nice to see you, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's always good to talk to somebody here in Texas. <laughs> absolutely, it's, I did not even realize y'all were so close, y'all are right around the corner. Yeah, you could have come over. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, why don't you give us a little bit of background about yourself, um, you know, uh, your practice, uh, you know, specialty, those sort of things. Yeah, so I'm a local Houstonian. I've um, lived here my whole life. And then I did my um, doctorate at University of Houston College of Optometry. So born and raised here, stayed here, did my studies here. And then I opened a practice. Um, I have optometry um, in Houston Heights. And so really close um, to uh, where y'all are. So I think y'all are about 45 minutes away. So not too far at all. And so my practice is a family practice. I see patients that are six months and up. And so mom, dad, grandparents, kiddos, I see everyone. And I really have found a new love for pediatrics. Um, it's a hard, hard specialty to get into um, really seeing little ones and trying to navigate how to get a, a patient in the door that's six months old and trying to get their prescription and trying to nail everything down. And in school, it's, it looks a lot different when you do rotations and pediatrics. But now once you're in real life and seeing families, it is so fun. I love it so much. And I now I'm trying to make it a big point in my practice to really get those kiddos in the door at a really early age. So that's what my specialty is, is in my practice, but I see patients of all ages. Yeah, so that's very interesting. Uh, I think it would be uh, somewhat surprising for people to say that, uh, you know, I like uh, doing eye exams on little kids because I imagine it's probably somewhat challenging. It is very challenging. And there's not a lot of doctors who will see patients that early in life, despite that being when they need their first eye exam. Um, most practices that I have worked at in the past or that um, my friends work at, they're five and six years up. Um, most doctors, you know, that's when they start to feel comfortable. You can um, have a five-year-old tell you, yes, number one is better than number two. And you can really get those definitive answers. But with little kids, you, you don't get those definitive answers that you hope for. And um, so that's what it, it's harder to find that in the area for sure to find doctors that'll see patients that little. So I, I, but not necessarily surprised by that, right? Like as we yeah. talked about the challenges, but when when do kids need to get an eye exam? Uh, is is it okay to wait till they're five? Uh, you know, how does that work? Yeah, so you really want to have your kids' vision checked. There are some guidelines by the American Academy of Op um, Optometry, and you want to have their first eye exam at between six and twelve months old. And then, if that appointment everything looks great, you want to have them checked back at three years old. And then, if that appointment looks great and they don't need glasses, then we'll check you back at five years old or you know, going into kindergarten, and then it'll be every year after that, like an adult, we're supposed to be seen every year. However, um, if you're at your six or 12 month appointment, and you find something wrong, then we're going to want to see you more frequently, not just, we won't wait from six, six months to three years old. And so we would see you every year. You know, I, I think you touched on this a second ago, I, I think we've all taken, uh, you know, a generalized eye exam before. And it and, and I don't want to say it's subjective, but there is some input coming back from the patient in, in terms of what looks better. So what does is, what is a pediatric eye exam look like if you can't get that uh, interaction with the patient directly? For sure. It looks very different from an adult exam, I'll tell you that much. Um, it's a lot of looking at the TV and trying to get them to focus at something far away as best you can. And so when a six-month-old or 12-month-old or someone who really can't give me any type of um, response that you're used to with an adult exam. First, they come in and we're just checking. We're talking with the parents about their health history. Um, did they have a full term birth? Were they in the NICU? Because those if you know you had an early birth or you were in the NICU, you might stand a chance to have um, 
vision problems. That's more likely if you were born at 32 weeks versus 40 weeks, you may have you know vision problems that may be more likely. And so we go through a health history with the parents. And then we first start off by checking pupil reflexes, making sure their eyes are aligned. Um, we are checking um, visual acuity. And it's not just, you know, looking at a bunch of letters and seeing what the letters are. There's different ways to go about it. For really small children, we have some um, contrast pictures. And so the contrast gets smaller or the contrast gets less and less and less. And, and we'll hold up like a blank white and then it'll hold up like a, it looks like a little smiley face, but the smiley face contrast gets lighter and lighter. And we'll say, where's Heidi? And if they can look at the one where the, the smiley face is, we know that the child is seeing that image. And so um, they're not reading letters, but we're trying to, to check their contrast um, sensitivity based. And that's how we get their acuity usually. And then from there, we go into checking their refractive error. And when we're trying to get their prescription, I'll usually I'll throw up a movie or Despicable Me is usually playing. And uh, we like for their pupils to be nice and dilated. So their pupils to be big. And then I'm using lenses myself and I am checking their prescription with a light. It's called a retinoscope. And um, that is we're checking the refractive error with lenses and light to check what their pupil reflexes look like. And that's going to give me a much better idea of what their prescription is versus you're never going to get a response, especially out of a two or three year old. That's that one's clear. This one's blurrier. And so it's it's more my prescription, not the patient telling me which one's better for them. Yeah, I mean, is is that uh, when we're going through these particular eye exams, is it specifically around visual acuity? Is there anything uh, other than that that we're looking for or on the lookout for? For adults or for children? For, for children specifically here. We do want their their visual acuity is not right off the bat. It's not going to be 2020. And so we're not we're not trying to get, you know, a nailed down perfect 2020. And you're never going to know that for sure in a child that little as well. Um, children actually don't see 2020 until about two to four years old anyway. And so, oh, really? yeah, so their vision is, it gets better as they get a little older. And we use, there are some kind of guidelines where a child's prescription should be um, at six and 12 months. And then at one year and two year, we know kind of a ballpark range. Um, they're not going to be zero. Um, uh, zero is what a, an adult strives to have a zero prescription. A child should not be zero. They're usually more on that plus side um, as a child. And as they grow up, they grow closer to zero. And so with a kid, if they come in and they're six months old and I'm reading, they've got a plus 150 or they've got a plus 250. They're, they're in that ballpark where they should be. And that's been I know um, just based on looking with my retina scope and um, their pupil reflexes, I can see that. So, uh, you know, for the parents, um, you know, we've talked about the time when parents should bring in uh, for these exams. What are some things that parents can look out for uh, in regards to children's eyes? Uh, you know, are there any signs I should be looking for? Uh, you know, maybe maybe even I haven't had the exam yet, or or, or maybe we had the exam last year. Is, is there anything I can look for to sort of uh, triage these things, if you will? For sure. And so the big thing I tell parents, uh, new parents, to look for are when you enter the room, are is your baby, when they're really little, is your baby registering your face or are they hearing your voice before they hear your face when you enter a room? Because if the, if you're saying, hi, baby, and they're looking around, they can hear that you're in the room, but they can't see that you're in the room and they're looking for you and it takes them a while to register, they could have a visual problem. Um, if you drop something on the ground, are they able to see that something has dropped and pick it up? Are they seeing that there's, and so I always tell parents, Look for squinting. Look for you know are they are they making eye contact with you? Are they looking around because they don't know where they're what they're seeing? Um, those are some signs you can tell for uh, refractive error uh, refractive error early on. Um, other main things a lot of time patients come in or parents come in because their child eye may turn in or out one eye so one eye is looking straight one eye is looking in or one eye is looking out. Um, that's a big reason parents bring their kid in for the first eye exam because it freaks them out. They're like why is one eye why is their right eye turning inward. And so um, a lot of times those eye turns go hand in hand with a child needing glasses. And so that's what we're checking for as well. So those are the big things parents look out for. Um, I would say those are the most common I see. 
So it, 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 let's say that you had a, um, and let's say a pediatric case, and we're talking young here, so uh, I don't know, uh, six months a year, right? And you notice some acuity issues, would you put them in corrective lenses? Uh, it, it, and uh, forgive me here, right? But like, as a child, it's not like they're reading a board, it's not like they're trying to read a book, right? Uh, so Absolutely. is that how you'd handle it? Absolutely. And so, um, for instance, I've got a couple patients and um, some with eye turns and some without, and I'll look at their refractive error and they're a plus 550, they're a plus six. And no, they, they need glasses at that point. And I, we have them here. We have these tiny, tiny little baby glasses. They're so cute. Um, and it's really, it's, it's really rewarding to see a tiny kid go into a plus six and then experience their world in front of them for the first time. And you see really them light up. Um, they do need glasses, despite them not being able to tell you that everything in the world is blurry or everything in the world is not clear. Um, they re once they put those glasses on, they know. Well, I imagine like for them, like like you said, like they couldn't tell you that it was blurry. But, I, you know, there, there's a good portion of your development as a as a young child that comes from visual. Right. Like I see things yeah. I learn from these sort of things. Yeah. So it, yeah. it, it makes a lot of sense that 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 would be the case. So. Uh, We've got we've got these corrective lenses that uh, these children are on, and and by the way, can you just talk on it real quick? We talked about a plus six, and, and for our audience out there, that's yeah. severe, right? <laughs> like it's for sure, um, minus six plus six, whichever way you're going, it's it's pretty severe either way, um, and so that is you know like I said, with a um, six month to twelve month old, you know anywhere in that mild low plus um, under a plus. 250 plus three, that's pretty average when those little tiny babies and then some astigmatism, I don't know that I'm getting into some medical jargon, but some astigmatism is pretty common as well. But when we start creeping up either in the minuses or if we're creeping up in the high pluses, yes, we probably, we're gonna need some glasses for sure. So for parents out there, um, let's let's say uh, my child did have some visual acuity issues. Is this something, is this indicative of the way that their eyes are going to be for the rest of their lives? Or is this just something that we need to address now and, you know, it's probably going to change? <laughs> and so it, like, every case, case by case is totally different. And so um, the more severe your prescription is right off the bat, chances are you're probably going to need them into um, you know, child, later childhood and into adulthood, some of the more mild cases, I say, hey, we see what every growth spurt they have, maybe their prescription is going to change and it's going to come closer and closer to zero. Um, it really is case by case, but the more severe cases, it does a lot of times lead to them needing glasses into their, into adulthood. I say the younger you go into glasses, especially if you're um, super little, like say you're six month old and you're in plus six, that's probably going to be something you're going to need. Maybe not that high, but something you'll need into adulthood. Probably a good indication at that point, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. So we've talked a lot about pediatrics, but I know that, that uh, you do family practice in general, right? Yeah. Uh, in, in your office. So let's talk a little bit broader about just, uh, you know, the holistic part, right? Like, you know, you come in as a pediatric, you go through your, your life. Uh, you know, what, what's that part of your practice like? Um, and so for uh, when I see mainly adults or older children, my, what we're doing in my practice is not only are we doing general glasses and contact lenses, of course, we do that for everyone here. Um, my practice also does a lot of medical optometry. So we see a lot of foreign bodies in the eye. We see a lot of scratches, um, ulcers, any of those um, kind of mild cases. But then we see also major cases like retinal detachment, glaucoma, macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, things like that. I do, I, I also specialize and do a lot of that as well. Um, so kind of a wide range of things I offer. I, I love children, that's one of my specialties, but I do offer a wide variety of other services as well here. Dr. Cutter, I have really enjoyed our uh, conversation today. I, you know, I'm glad that we got to cover so much uh, about pediatrics. You know, this isn't the first time that we've covered this topic on this channel, but every time I learn something new, uh, because it, it, I think, it, you know, for the general public, it's not something you think about. Like, I, I think, like you said, most people think before you go to school, you definitely need to go to an optometrist, right? But what I'm hearing more and more uh, from the doctors that we've talked to on this channel is that's not really the case, right? Like, they're... they're 
there is a need to get in there earlier so that if there are issues, the underlying issues, we might can address them sooner. Absolutely. And so the last thing um, I'll say on that is I always tell um, parents when they come in by themselves, I'm like, hey, I see you've got a kid. You never know if they're seeing clear or blurry. They Children, most of the time, don't know what the difference between clear and blurry is, um, especially if they've never seen clearly. And so I tell them, you know, like, oh, no, my kid can see. My kid can see. And I'm like, well, they may be seeing 2040, which is not terrible vision, but it's not 2020. And neither they know nor you know until you get them in here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, doctor, is there anything else you want to uh, share with the audience? I've really enjoyed our time together today. Thank you so much for having me and just uh, remember to get your kiddos in for their annual exams. It's really, really important for their, like you've been saying, for their development, for school, for reading. Um, a lot of uh, learning disabilities are just actually vision problems that have gone undiagnosed. And so that's a big thing. So get those, get those kiddos in for their annual eye exams.